Hey, hey everybody, today I want to make another video here. I want to talk a little bit about playing sounds in Unity and how to control them with a script. So in the previous video here, very basic, we had a game manager, we attached an audio source, and we put an MP3 on that sample, or excuse me, we put the sample MP3 on the audio source. I'm gonna unmute my desktop audio so you guys, so you guys can hear it, right? Or if I play the game, same deal. And I have to unmute the... I'm sorry, we should turn back on Play on Wake. Right, so that's just the kind of default sound behavior, right? If I plop a sound in scene, it plays. If I check it off to Play on Wake here, it doesn't play if I don't do that. Now, how would I want to control that with a script? Because this doesn't do me a lot of good as of now. If I can just play a sound at the beginning of the scene, that doesn't really affect my game a whole lot, right? Like, I can't have a player walk up to a chest and then play a sound when they open the chest. So I can't have a sword sound when they hit an object here. I want to be able to play this when something happens in a script, right? So that's what we're going to cover in this lecture here in this video. But before we continue, if you guys enjoy this type of content, be sure to give me a thumbs up, comment down below. And if you guys want to see any type of video tutorials, be sure to let me know too. Anyways, let's get started here. So first up here, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that play on wake is not ticked on here because I don't want to play it right away. I want to control it with a script. Right. I'm going to go ahead and go down to my project. I'm going to right click. Let's do create C sharp script and let's just name this audio manager. Now, if it were me and depending on the game, depending on if we're talking about a background track versus an individual uh, sounds from a player or an enemy, I would probably have one script to manage the enemy and then have the audio um, the audio the, the audio components, let's call it living on that script here. For this particular video here, we just have one script, and we're going to cover all the audio with this one script from here, just for simplicity. Let's go ahead and open this up, and we're going to do, drag this in the proper monitor, and we're going to delete this from here. All right, so we're dealing with a nice clean slate. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a serialized field, serialized field, serialized field, serialized field. There we go. And we're going to call this audio source and let's call audio source from here and we can go back to the unity window and remember this is kind of caching a reference here so now that we have something in script here we can drag this in and this way we can kind of control it within the script we're saying hey this audio source i'm oh, sorry one second here this audio source right here is the one that we're talking about now we'll take it back a step before we even do that we need to attach the script onto this game object so we can drag that on there and it's saying, hey, we need an audio source. Well, this game component has an audio source. All right, save. Now, another way that you could do that, if you forget or if you wanted to change it up here, probably the way that I honestly prefer, is to just do it on the start method from here. I noticed as I got more into game development, more into development in general, I like to do more within the script. So this is a more advanced way of doing it. Uh, of course, you could drag it on there. This would work exactly the same from here. But I'd like to do it this way a little bit better here. What we're going to do is we're going to say void, start with a capital S, and remember, this is the start method, so this is called at the beginning of the scene. And we're going to just say audio source equals this dot get component. Get component audio, capital A, audio source. Cool. So this method right here should link it up, and we can see that if we go back to our game, right, right now there's none. If we hit play, now we can see this being linked up from there, right? Cool. Back to our script, and I'll even make this a little bigger so you guys can see it a little better. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set an update method. I'm gonna say void, update, oops, update. And we're gonna go off a keystroke here. So I'm gonna say if input dot get key down, I'm sorry, get, uh, get key down, and let's call it key code, let's do space with a space bar. And if this happens here, what we're going to do is we're going to say audio source dot play. So we're taking whatever sounds attached to our audio source game object, and we're going to play that from there, right? If we press the space bar. So you're going to if input dot get key down, key code dot space, and then we can separate if method from there. Back to our game here.
And we'll notice nothing happens until I hit space. Right, and then we can hear that sound from there. Now one of the kind of strange behaviors is that if we hit space, it kind of restarts. So what I rather do here, sorry, wait for that to be done. What I rather do here is a little bonus. What I'm gonna do is if it's playing, we're gonna keep playing, or excuse me, if it's playing, we're gonna stop it. If it's not playing, we're going to play it, right? So what we can do from here is it on this input method, I'm sorry, not um, on this if method within the update method, we're gonna say if audio source that is playing, so if we are playing, and remember since this is a, a valid to be a true, we don't need to say equal equals true, right? We can just leave it as is. If we are playing, we're gonna say audio source dot stop. Otherwise, audio source dot play. Cool, and we're gonna save this script from here, back to here. Now it is worth noting as this loads here, you could have also done if audio source is not playing, then play and then stop, right? You could do the inverse. It works just as well for this example from here. Really what it comes down to is what's gonna organize your code better, right? Because if we have different things going on. If we have, oh, I don't know, maybe an animation playing from here, maybe it would be more wise if we have more things going on to have it all within one method and have it at the top here versus you know vice versa. Really what makes your code the most clean and readable and easy to build on top of, right? Back to the game from here. If we hit play, of course you guys can't see my hands here, so I'll kind of hit the space bar kind of loud. If I hit it again, it stops, right? So hopefully that's making come, excuse me, hopefully that's coming through on the audio here. You can hear the space bar being pressed and the audio too. And hopefully that's making some sense, guys. Again, a few things going on here from the very top. I'm going to save my scene here. Actually, I have to exit play mode first, save the scene. On the main camera first and foremost, we need to make sure we have an audio listener. That's usually usually almost there by default, but make sure it's still there. On our game object from here, we need an audio source, and we need the script attached. On the script here, we have a reference to audio source, and really what we even could do if we want to remove this and clean up our inspector a little bit, now we don't need to have this serialized anymore. We could have this as a private variable, right? And now if we go back to here, even though it doesn't appear here, we can actually see that if we go down to, or go up to here and then debug, we can still see that's on there, right? And it still gets attached. And it's being attached on the start method. And then on the update method, if we hit the key code space, then we're going to either play it or not play it based on if it's already playing or not, all right? So hopefully that makes some sense. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.